Uh, good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Okay, this morning, uh, I'm going to be doing a butternut pound cake. And if you can remember in previous in a previous video, I show you I showed you guys my layered butternut cake, and I told you I would not be sharing that recipe with you because it was a special recipe that I had sort of came up on my own and I was just kind of keeping it to myself but this recipe right here it's an awesome recipe you won't go wrong if you if you try it and so what I'm going to do um, I'm going to tell you the ingredients that you're going to need and then I'm going to step off and get my mixture and then I'm going to come back and show you guys how easy it is to mix up like I said this is a butter nut pound cake. A delicious cake. Okay. Let me tell you what you're going to need. This right here is three cups of all-purpose flour, also known as plain flour. And in this flour, I have one teaspoon of salt. One teaspoon of sea salt, whatever type of salt you use. None of this is a big deal. Okay. Right here, I have three cups of granulated sugar. It's three cups of granulated sugar. And this is um, two tablespoons of shortening. Whatever brand you use is okay, but you're going to need two tablespoons. And you're also going to need um, three sticks of butter. And I did both. I did salted and unsalted. So whichever one you want to use, it's, got, it's not going to make any difference. Uh, some people make a big deal with that salted and unsalted, but uh, I haven't found it. So you need three sticks of that, three sticks of, uh, of butter. And then you're going to need a uh, one eight ounce pack of uh, cream cheese. Whatever brand cream cheese you use. But this is what brand I use. Okay, now I, when I bake this cake, this is one time that I use my brown eggs. I like to use brown eggs in my cake because of the richness in it. So you're going to need six brown eggs, or you, if you got white eggs, regular eggs, go right ahead on. Because believe me, I have used white eggs and brown eggs, and it just really don't, you know, I haven't seen that much of a difference in it. And uh, so anything I don't, don't don't make a difference. I don't make no big deal out of it. Okay, this is your butternut flavor. Your butternut flavoring, and you're gonna need four teaspoons of the butternut flavor. You gonna also okay. Let me let me back up a minute. This cake has a frosting to go to it. That's what make it really. It's sure enough butternut. It has um. You know, it, it don't, it's going to have the flavor in it, this butternut flavor. It's going to have cream cheese. And um, it's going to also have uh, butter in it. I'm going to show you how to mix up the, uh, it, I mean, it's going to have chopped pecans in it. Okay. I I miss, when I uh, said what type of cake it was, I left out one thing. This cake, this cake is called a cream cheese butternut pound cake. Let me correct myself on that. So it's a cream cheese butternut pound cake. Cream cheese going to be in the cake itself and then cream cheese is also going to be in the frosting. So okay you guys let me go off and get my mixture and uh, I'm going to come back and show you how to mix it up. Now when I come back I'm going to already have my uh, my butter. I'm already have my butter and my two tablespoons of shortening and my cream cheese. I'm going to already have that mixing up when I come back on. And I, I probably say it to you again, but I will take up at that spot. Okay, you guys, I'll be right back. I'll tell you what's going on. I forgot to tell you when I, before I left off. Your room, I mean your uh, butter, your eggs, cream cheese. Butter, eggs, and cream cheese should be at room temperature. And my room temperature is normally about four or five hours. I had my butter and uh, 
my eggs and stuff sitting out warm into room temperature. And that, that makes for easy mixing and stuff. You, you can set it out long if you want. So, okay, I got the, um, the three sticks of butter, the two tablespoons of, of shortening, and uh, the six eggs. Now, the six eggs is right here. But the three cups of sugar, I have already creamed it. Got it creamed real well and fluffy. And I'm getting ready to add my eggs to it. I'm going to add the eggs one at a time. Y'all, you guys know how it go with me and the eggs one at a time. So if two pop up in there, oh well. <laughs> and just beat a little bit in between. Don't take much because, you know, I told you that it was at room temperature. Okay. I don't know how many went over there that time. Then when I get all my eggs added up in here, and then I'm going to uh, do a good scrape down, and I'm going to put my go ahead on and put my flavoring and stuff in. I always put my flavoring in before I start the flour because I want it all mixing and uh, um, mixed up in there well before I put the flour. Because once you put the flour in your cake, you don't need to be beating too long. Gotta make it gotta make your cake tight. I just usually be about 30 seconds in between. Or maybe about 30 seconds, there's 20. Because I'm going to do a spray down. Okay, that's the last egg. So now I'm going to let it be for a second. And then I'm going to do a spray down and uh, add my uh, vanilla. I mean my above the flavor. Now you guys, this cake bakes on 325 for an hour and a half. That's 325 for one hour and a half. How many of you guys ever had a butternut cake before? If you had, you know this is a delicious cake. This is my hand, Mom. Excuse me. when you got everything at room temperature. Okay. This is my four teaspoons of butternut flavor. Another teaspoon in there. I like for mine to be yellow and real and real flavor. Guys, I'm gonna add a, about another teaspoon or so of this flavor over here. I made a tablespoon because 
but this flavor you kind of have to put a lot and I didn't have that a while and it made maybe I lost the strength but it's gonna be I'm gonna have it in the uh, frosting too I'll tell you guys how to make up the frosting as soon as I get this in the oven and stuff and um my daughter's home with me this weekend I'm so happy because you know they done opened Florida back up and they moving along just well. Let's continue to pray for them. Everything go well. Because we know that with this country got to go back. You know, we got to get back on the on the on the uh back back in the groove of everything. And we're gonna be alright. God gonna God gonna uh, take us. And Alabama is open up. Certain things are not open up. But they're you know, they're trying to get back in the groove. And it's going to be all right. And I, Because I don't even pay attention to the negative talk that the media and stuff saying. You know, I've been stopped listening to a lot of things the media is saying. Uh, uh, certain things I, I listen to and third, certain things I don't. I do what an old deacon used to say. he been dead and gone for many years at the church. He used to tell us about church. Uh, when they... <laughs> He said, when it comes to, you know, come to church, you come to church because you're supposed to forsake uh, not to assemble yourself. But he said, you just got to get the meat and spit out the bones. And that's what I do. I get the meat and spit out the bones. And I listen to who I think is going to be credible in what they're telling us, not to put fear and stuff in us. They want, some people just want things bad like that. That's, that's, that's the work of the adversary. But so much for that. But she's here and she's going to be frosting this cake for me. And uh, I'm going to get ready to start putting in my flour. You see how yellow it is, guys? Pretty and delicious. I think I told you guys. Um, uh, butternut cake is... It's really good. And my daughter asked me, did I remind, uh, she reminded me, uh, did I tell you guys to have everything at room temperature? She done baked cakes before, and they should know that's an easy deal when you do that room temperature. You ain't got nothing to, to worry about as far as, as far as everything's getting mixed real well. And you don't put milk in this cake, guys. So I'm going to get this flour put over in there. I usually put it in uh, two or three inclements. Sometimes I do more. I've been doing this cake for many, many years. I can't tell you how many years that I have been doing it. Let me go slow because I don't want to throw, uh, throw flour everywhere. Like I say, you don't put milk in it. I had a lot, uh, you know, before we the country started going through these crises and stuff like that. I was pretty well excited because I, I was having, you know, I was getting a lot of comments with saying that they liked it and appreciated it. And I thank the ones that tell me how much you appreciate the recipes that I share with you guys because I try to keep them simple and easy but delicious. I wanted to show you guys that don't take a... a a whole lot of stuff or whatever to uh, um, make a good dish. It don't take a whole lot of ingredients. Uh, that's something I think we took from the from the old school. Them people had the, them them uh, cooks back then. Your parents, grandmother, they had simple things, but what made it so good? They put a whole lot of love in. They put a whole lot of love in and a not a lot of different seasoning. You know, if you like that with certain things, because I like Mexican food and when I want something different and sometimes I add spices to my Mexican food. Um, let me turn this up a little bit and get ready to add some more flour. I think I'll raise my thing up. You see how well it's mixing just like it got some kind of milk or some kind of liquid in it and it don't.
But anyway. All right, now let's. I don't want Cassie to say, hey, that's fine if this fly will go everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> she said, Nana, can we turn it on and see what the. I said, we can't turn it on high. I said, because that was so fly everywhere. She said, well, Nana, can we turn it on? I want to see the fly will go high. I had one of my. Um, I had one of my subscribers, she took a to there. She sent me a comment and said that she always wanted that to happen too. <laughs> oh. One day I may, I just might do that with my granddaughters. I have four with my grandkids. Because they love to get in the, uh, uh, the oldest granddaughter, she's beginning to like to get in the kitchen with me. But that, my baby granddaughter, she always come in and ask me, now can I be your helper today? Or can I be your test, taste tester today? I said, sure, come on in, sweetheart. You can help Granny out. Okay, let me do another stir and put the last of this flour in. And you guys, I want you to look at what it's looking like. Before I put the last of the flour in, because I'm not gonna keep you on to, uh, you know, show you the final beating. I'm gonna go ahead on and uh, put it in the, uh, put it in my pan. Okay, let me show you. I got a flour. I always grease mine and flour it. I don't. I have that there, uh, baker's jar and stuff like that. But I didn't particularly care for it. But I grease and flour, as I'm doing it in the picture, doing the right mm -hmm. eye. And this is probably about a, I would say about a 10 inch, 10 inch, 10 inch tube pan. Get it right, CT. <laughs> get it right. <laughs> so let me get the rest of this flour for you guys. And that's it because I have some seasoned cooks. I don't have to. I, I don't have to show them every little steps. And on top of that, but I want to show how he mix up his case with some younger cook. And because uh, you know, I always leave it open. If it's something that you didn't understand, all you had to do was let me know. Let me get it uh started and then I'll show you. And then I'm gonna go off and uh put it in that 325 degree oven. I always start it off in a cold oven. I don't have it preheated. Now you have me, I have some cakes that I have preheated and I probably have baked this at one time preheated but normally I just start it off in that cold oven and um, it'd be fine. Scrape down, you guys, and you see what the uh, batter is looking like. The consistency of it—that's that's right on point, right there. That's what it should look like. And I'm gonna let it finish uh, beating. I'm gonna beat it probably about a less than another minute, or maybe about a minute. Then I'm gonna put it in my pan. And uh, while the cake is baking, I'm going to come back and make the frosting of the cake. I mean, make a frosting while the cake is in the oven. I'm going to come back and show you how to mix up the frosting. And then I may show you a, a little quick clip of the cake once it's baked. But then other than that, the next time that uh, somebody will just come on, I mean, if I come on with the frosting, uh, my daughter going to be uh, ready to um, frost the cake for you guys. And then that will be the end of the video. Okay, guys. Uh, I'll be right back. Okay, you guys. The cake have finished baking. And I want to show you the finished pro product of the bake, bake before I put the uh, frosting on. So this is what it looks like. And I'm going to set it out of the way and show you the ingredients that I'm going to be using to make the frosting. 
and then uh, when I get to making the frosting, Brittany gonna come back and frost the cake for you. Hold on just a second. Okay, what you're gonna need for this frosting, right here I have a, a stick of soften, not real, real soft, soften uh, butter and uh, half a half a block of, of cream cheese simply because I couldn't find the four ounces so I just got an eight ounce and I'll uh, cut it in half. Put that in. And then I got the uh, 16 ounce of the uh, powdered sugar. You guys really and truly um, you don't have to make this much uh, frosting for the cake because it's a pound cake. But I always make uh, a full recipe of the cream cheese um, frosting simply because I like to, uh, I bake some cupcakes and use the, uh, I bake some butter cupcakes and I use the rest of the frosting and stuff for that. Okay. You will need that uh, that 16 ounces of that, and this is pecans. I'm not getting ready. I'm not gonna put them in yet. So that was um, uh, half a stick of a cream cheese, one stick of butter, and then over here I got four teaspoons of this here uh, butternut flavor, and then I got some. Uh, I got about two or three tea, uh, tablespoons of milk on standby. Uh, I don't know how much of that I'm going to use. So let me get the mix in it so I can see how much, uh, how much of that I may have to use. Remember what I told you guys about the um, cream cheese frosting? You know, be careful with your liquid, liquid that you put in because you can easily get it too loose. That's the reason I don't go too far with the uh, getting my butter at um, room temperature. I just get it. I may, I might let it set out maybe just like a hour and a half or a couple of hours before I'm ready to use it. Okay, I'm going to go in with my flavoring. And I may put some more of that flavoring there because you know butternut flavoring, that's what makes your cake. Now if you get your batter and stuff right, the cake part right, that flavor going to do the rest for you. Turn it up a little bit. Now, if you don't want to use the uh, pecans of yours, you don't have to. It ain't mandatory that you do, but I know because I have had a lot of you guys to say you don't want the pecans and want to use walnuts. I've never used walnuts before and uh, I have never not did this cake without the pecans so you know I like for you guys to you know try different stuff into uh make each recipe your own because that's exactly what I be doing with a lot of them. I got so many other recipes and stuff that I want to uh, share with you guys that I had lined it up. And I was saying that since they had, I always start talking and don't finish what I'm saying. But Alabama has opened back up, Florida has opened back up, and we so excited and happy about that. And my daughter came home to be with us a couple of days, and we're just beside ourselves. Because uh, I really wasn't going to get her to help me do nothing. She said, no, Mom, I want to help you. I want to, I want to do something. Okay, let me show you, show you the uh, 
consistency of this icing right now. And you, you see, I only put the flavor and the cream cheese and the, uh, can you see it there? Mm -hmm. And the butter. I haven't put any liquid to it, but I made sure I had my milk over here because I know that I'm going to put those uh, pecans in there and I'm more likely going to need it. Nothing over here to get this off. Let me see. Now you see what uh, the uh, four teaspoons of that vanilla uh, butternut did. And because I got the butternut in the cake and it's a pound cake, I'm probably not, I'm probably not going to put any more in there. But I put as much of that butternut that I want to in there. I don't overdo it, but I have it just right. Okay, I'm going to put one little old drop of milk, I mean a little bit of milk in here, and then I'm going to go ahead on and, and put my pecans in. Start out with these two teaspoons. So you can so quickly and easily get this head stuff, this type of, uh, these uh, cream cheese or butter and stuff, uh, um, frosting too. Two feet. I think that's good. Now I'm gonna go ahead on and uh, let me get this off my hand. Go ahead on and sprinkle these. Uh, Pecans over it. And incorporate them into your into your frosting. And that's all to it, you guys. Just finish getting it mixed well. And you may see where you don't even need that uh whatever kind of experience you have with the cream cheese filling, you probably know exactly what I'm saying by not getting too much liquid in that on it don't go south but if you if you do get too much liquid in it don't sweat it no big deal i told you guys don't make no big deal out of stuff just put you some more powdered sugar over in it and i guarantee you people will love it your butternut uh, frosting all day and Brittany come back and gonna put it on the cake for you guys and uh when we come back the next time out of you see is Brittany and I probably come back and cut you guys a slice of it to see what it looks like be right back hello everybody it's Brittany's May May's daughter again and I'm back to do my typical thing that I do which is um, icing the cake. This is the frosting that my mom made up. Um, she also put some toasted pecans in here. Then she toasted them in the oven for about three to five minutes at 350 degrees so they get that good um, toasty flavor. And it's, they're all mixed up in the frosting. And I'm gonna go ahead and get started. You got some to put on the top too. Oh, yes, I also have some um, toasted pecans here that are go I'm going to decorate the top of the cake with. Tell them I forgot to tell them the pecans and the feel is supposed to be toasted when yeah. I put it in the frosting. My mom says she forgot to tell y'all that the uh, pecans and the frosting are supposed to be toasted when you put it on there when she was getting that done. I'm just going to start using the spatula and the knife. Now, pound cakes are, to me anyway, one of the easier cakes to frost. Unlike a layer cake where you know you have to frost some and they layer the cakes up and they got to stack the layers a certain way so your cake is straight and not lopsided. 
Um, so I, I like frosting these. I frost them all, but these are just easier in my personal opinion. Hope everybody is doing well in the midst of all of this stuff that we have going on. Hope y'all are safe and healthy. Hopefully y'all saw some of my others, my mom's other videos about the juices and the smoothies and y'all were incorporating that into some of your daily routines to try to help boost our immune systems or, well, I read somewhere that there's no such thing as boosting your immune system, but anything that you can do right now to try to keep yourself as healthy as possible and trying to fight off any of the bad stuff, you're giving your body all the things that it needs to fight off any of the bad stuff that's going around, I say do it. No harm in it. I'm about to go onto the side and start frosting. Now, I love this uh, frosting, butternut frosting. It just tastes so good to me. I don't know what it is about that flavoring, but it's just very unique. And I think if you've never had it before and you choose to try it, you'll love it. trying to get on the sides here. Hope y'all can see me. Now, this may not be the prettiest right now as far as like um, getting it on the plate and such, on the cake plate, but once I get it all iced, I'll go in and clean all that up to make the presentation a little prettier. So, how are things going where y'all are at? In Florida, which is where I live, things are slowly but surely starting to open back up and get back to semi-normal. I don't know if it'll be, you know, like it used to be, but we'll try to restore some type of normalcy. And I know a lot of people are scared, but, you know, just the reality of it is people have to get back to work. Everybody can't afford to, to be off for months at a time just this unfortunate sad reality of it and I am very grateful to have still been working through this time I had a, I have a job that allowed me to telework but I know that's not the reality for everybody so I am very grateful and just hoping that the people that need to get back to work are able to and they can start restoring their finances and their homes and their financial securities again. Now I'm not going to ice this whole cake on camera. Uh, only a little bit just so y'all get the the idea of how it's going to go. But I think Alabama is starting to open stuff up again here as well but like in increments which I think every state is doing in increments I think they have to you know you, nobody wants to end up at square one again with all of this stuff so I came to visit my parents because you know if stuff starts opening back up and I get back to working like I, I was who knows when I'll be able to come visit again because I gotta go make my coins <laughs> But I am happy to be at home with my parents for a couple of days. So I sweet. miss my my mom and dad. You won't be. They the miss me too. You won't be seeing your son. You can. <laughs> he allowed us to be together one more time. One more time, one more time. God allowed us to be together one more time. All right, I don't want to get copyrighted, so. <laughs> okay, that is so You great. want a fact, uh, an interesting fact, y'all? 
uh, it's something with our family. I don't know. I guess it's genetic. Where my mom does it. My cousin Quartarius does it. My brother and my oldest niece Kendall do, uh, do it. They just start singing. Um, <laughs> and random <laughs> They bust into <laughs> random songs. And it is. And I, it is a dancer when I'm in the store. Yeah. <laughs> my brother and Kendall, uh, my oldest niece Kendall, his daughter, they're known to remix songs. <laughs> they, uh, you, they'll hear a song and the Mario next time you hear them singing it, it's not, they done created their own words. It sounds good, don't get me wrong. <laughs> they say it sounds good completely. But, uh, but, I think that's all I'm going to do on camera, y'all. Y'all pretty much get the gist of it. I'm going to finish um, icing it, clean up the plate real pretty. And my mom's going to come back and slice it up and serve it to y'all. And we will be back. Okay, everyone. I'm back with the fin finished product of the uh, cream cheese butternut cake. And I want to thank my sweet daughter for uh, frosting the cake for me. Even though I did have a little fun with her singing that song with her. Y'all just don't know when she was younger and I used to be in the store and I would bust out with songs. She said, Mama! Mama! And I was like, what? <laughs> but uh, I had to do that. We had so much fun. I am so proud of my, my uh, daughter and son. Not because of their accomplishment. It's because of the, the, the young man and uh, the, the man and woman that they have became. They really is just good people and know how to treat people and love the Lord. And I say a mother cannot ask for any more. So I'm just so proud of them and I want them to know that. And I appreciate, appreciate them to the highest. I was trying to tell you guys in one of the videos that Alabama was opening back up. But you know how I, I say something and get cut. I mean my train of thought to go away and I either I start concentrating on what I'm doing and forget what I said but I'm getting better so you guys I'm going to cut you guys a slice of this cake but first let me end this in video uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel already please subscribe and I want to thank all my subscribers and appreciate your new subscribers coming on I appreciate it to the highest Ask God to bless you and continue to bless me so I can be able to come in and share these videos. It's from my heart and it's love and everything. And I'm and, and oh I got so many uh recipes I want to share with you guys. And remember, I'm gonna always be looking out for the young folks. Some of I'll be having recipes that I you know that my kids like, some of them when they was coming up. And so yeah. Okay, hit that notification bell to be notified. And leave me a comment down below if you are uh, ever had um, butternut uh, pound cake before. And since my daughter is home, and uh, she asked me, "Is there anything, Mom? Is there anything you want me to help you do towards video? Why? I think I'm gonna have her to put the uh, the uh, recipe and the ingredients and everything for this cake in the description box. So let me cut you guys a piece." And I'm cutting it with this here beautiful set, uh, cake serving set that uh, one of my YouTube friends. Hold it down, can't see it. Oh, I'm sorry. Up a little bit more. Yeah. She gave this to me. That's a sweet lady. Like I tell you, when people do something for you like this that you're not expecting, it's a it's a gift from God. God gave it to you, and uh. You're supposed to say thank you for my blessing, and I do. And I let her knew, know that I think I really thank her for this. I love it. Hadn't hadn't learned. I, I think I'm getting used to cutting, uh, using it. I don't know. So let me. I'm gonna cut you guys a pretty nice slice of this. Y'all gonna be saying they may learn how to slice cake. Wait a minute, I put this over here. So if it uh do something that ain't got no business, it can fall over into the plate. Hmm. Can they see my slice of cake? I cut you guys a big hump. 
Hold it down. Yeah. Okay, that's it. Mm -hmm. I cut you guys a big hunk of cake. And if you ever was to get to vi visit May May Happy Table, you will find out that she fixed plenty and make you more than welcome. And whatever's left over, uh, you can take it with you. Or uh, we share. Only thing I get mad up, mad about when you come to my house, not mad, I get upset about, it, is that you don't or enjoy yourself and eat all you want. My daughter told me one time, <laughs> she said, Mama, you know what? I have learned since I've, you know, been working off at jobs and all that, that kind of stuff. And we have uh, lunches and, and potlucks and stuff like that. She said, you ain't no, she said, uh, you don't police food. She said, you are, you are, and you don't talk about how much people eat. I said, no, I don't talk about it. And I don't want nobody else to talk about it. Because if I, my granddaddy said, if I offer it to you, you are welcome. And you can have as much as you want, so you don't talk about it. And uh, so this is my butternut cake, you guys. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Stay safe now. And like I say, I hope y'all cities is opening and, and states and stuff is opening back up real soon. Because we have opened up and continue to pray for us that everybody stay safe and we're well on our way. Okay, bye. I'll see you in my next video.